We're joined by a man who was part of Liverpool's 2005 Champions League winning squad. A very good morning to Neil Mellor. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, morning Ray. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, OK, what did you make of it last night, Neil? Did you like what you saw? I did. I did. It was another great European away performance from Liverpool. I thought first half, it could have been four or five quite easily. and um, The tie could have been over. I thought Benfica responded second half, albeit gifted a goal back into the game. And then Liverpool just sealing it with that third goal from, from Diaz, who was absolutely magnificent. So it's a commanding lead. Uh, of course, Benfica with the outsiders anyway before the tie. And it's very difficult to see them going to Anfield and, and overturning this deficit. And Trent alexander on another great performance, Neil, wasn't it? I mean, some of the passing, the range of passes as well uh, is unbelievable. I mean, he plays like a winger anyway. We know that. The delivery's into the box, but... Some, the, the second goal was absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? How they won the ball back in midfield, pushed it out to Trent, and that 50-yard pass to uh, Diaz with a head-up was was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Unbelievable ball, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's Trent. You know, Trent's been magnificent for Liverpool, um, certainly going forward. I think he's very important for how Liverpool play. There was a little worry, wasn't that, over the international break, certainly from a Liverpool point of view, about his injury. How severe was it? How many games might he miss? He missed the Watford game, but he looked fresh. He looked like the Trent that we've seen all season. That's great news ahead of a massive game at the weekend against City. And what's interesting is when, when Liverpool played City earlier on in the season, Liverpool we struggled a little bit for creativity. And the reason for me was... Trent didn't play in that game. Now, Trent's back. He's looking like himself again. So he will be a massive boost for, for that game at the weekend. Mm. The big question, Neil, I've got to ask you, uh, what sort, how, does he, how does he approach the game on the weekend? Um, you know, did you, in, in, in his mind, Jurgen Klopp, has he got a team he's going to put out? Does Jota play? You know, all, all these scenarios. You've got so many good players, but he's getting mm. the right balance. And how do you think he will approach the game? Will he go out all attack or will he just sit back? And it's a really hard one to call. Yeah, I think both teams will look at it and think, can't lose this one. But both will approach it trying to win the game. You know, both will certainly won't be cautious. I think both teams will be brave and it'll be a case of who's more clinical in the final third when those opportunities come. Like you say, for Liverpool, there's a number of options, certainly team news. And that's a big strength for Liverpool because there could be nine games in April, two have gone already uh, and the squad's so important six changes last night six changes and Liverpool looked really strong again so the question will be who's your front three because you're saying Jota's been in great form he's got 20 goals this season Salah's got 28 Diaz was magnificent I think Bobby Firmino suits playing against the City because they like to get Rodri on the ball and I think he's perfect for stopping him getting on the ball and then Marnie as well who got himself a goal so big call for the manager at the weekend um, but there's plenty of competition for places, which is good Good news for Liverpool at this stage of the season. Neil, on Salah, um, there's an article this morning that Dom King's written, the North West reporter for the Daily Mail, and he was saying that misfiring Mo Salah is in need of a reboot and his desperation for a goal in a slick Liverpool team is becoming more appa apparent. Um, he's not scored an open play since February the 19th. That was against Norwich. Do you feel like he's he's been a little bit affected um, by AFCON and, and then by the recent one as well? He, do you know what? He's, he's, he still gives Liverpool so much. Uh, maybe he's not been hitting the, the net quite as much recently. Um, and I can see Dom's point there. But he's got 28 goals in all competitions. He's going to win the golden boot in the Premier League. I think there will be some kind of a reaction. He's not scored in the last few games for Liverpool. I think he was frustrated with obviously not qualifying for the World Cup. I thought uh, Kamara, the, the left fullback for Watford, was outstanding against him. I thought he played really well. Man-to-man uh, -man marked him and didn't get much space. But by doing that, he gives space to other players. So, um, And that's the problem the opposition will have. So I think there will be a reaction from Salah. And I think he will chip in with, with a few more goals before the end of the season. And he'll get over that 30-goal barrier this season. Uh, Neil, when you sign players like Diaz, you, you just never know how they're going to fit into the Premier League and uh, whether they're, they're going to settle in a different environment. But Diaz has been absolutely brilliant, hasn't he? And that, you know what a signing during the January window because most people would always say you can't get the right players at January, but certainly mm -hmm. uh, Liverpool did get the right player. Came from nowhere as well because there was a lot of talk about maybe not bringing someone in. So so people were thinking, okay, fine, it'll probably be the summer. And then the de the deal got done, and like you say, he settled really quickly, and that's a big thing for for any player. Um, certainly a. Pl going into a team that are challenging for so many trophies like Liverpool. The the language could be a difficulty, 
But I know that Pep Linders, the first team coach, has been very good in, in that sense in terms of the language and, and helping him sell a few players as well. So uh, he looks at home. You know, I think he's he's done really well. He, he looks explosive. He looks creative. He looks like he's got goals in his locker and um, and certainly adds competition for places in that front three. But it just makes difficult decisions, doesn't it, for the manager? Because mm-hmm. it's difficult to predict who he's going to start at the weekend against City in that front three. Yeah, that game, it couldn't be bigger at the moment, oh. Neil, really, could it? Who, who do you think, after last night's performances, who do you think would be the happier manager going into that game? Well, City are above Liverpool, so they'll be happy with that. Liverpool, I think, have the momentum because everyone have been saying, oh, City have had it comfortable for so long in the title race. Now Liverpool are really putting City under pressure. That that would have been a tough game for City last night and not an enjoyable game for the players, for the fans playing at Atletico who make it difficult, make it horrible to watch. Um, but but it'd be a much better game on, on Sunday, I think it will be. Um, City have got a better running. But they know just how big this game is at the weekend with Liverpool in great form. OK, Neil, we'll let you go. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Speak to you again very, very soon. Uh, former Liverpool striker Neil Mellor there. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.